And now, a Merry Christmas to you. And here, the Aldrich family on NBC. <laughs> Yes, it's the oldest family of transcribed, written by Clifford Goldsmith. The holiday season is always the wide-eyed time of the year for a typical teenage boy. But no matter how wide open his eyes are, he's almost certain to walk right smack into some assorted troubles especially if he's like Henry Aldrich. The scene opens at the Aldrich breakfast table. The time is morning. 10, 11, 12. Henry, will you pass the cream, please? The cream, Mary, here you are. 12, 13. Henry, that's the sugar you're passing. Oh, excuse me, here. 12, 13, 14. Henry, six. may I have that piece of toast if you aren't going to eat it? I'm going to eat it, Mother. Was that 13 or 14? 12. Now, Sam, don't rattle him. It was 14, dear. Fourteen? Are you sure? Yes, Henry. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Well, gee whiz. What's the matter? Do you know how many Christmas cards I received this time last year? How many? According to my records, thirty-five. That shows how times change. Well, Henry, this is only the day before Christmas. There's one more delivery. Well, I know, Mother, but all my old standbys are hurt from. I can't depend on any new ones coming in. Henry, are you sure you have the right attitude toward Christmas? The right attitude, Father? Well, I've got to know where I stand, don't I? I've slipped back to practically 1949. All right, dear, all right. Eat your cereal. No, I'm eating it, Mother. Sam, did we send the Whitmores a card? The Whitmores? Who are the Whitmores? Well, don't you remember? We met them on the train coming back from Chicago. You mean that trip we took way back in 1946? Yes. And they're still sending us cards? Every Christmas. Naturally, we ought to send them one. Henry, are you going to Nancy Adams' party tonight? What's that, Mary? The party tonight. Are you going? Well... Well, I'll tell you, Mary. Henry, Nancy isn't giving a party on Christmas Eve, is she? Well, in a way, she's giving it on Christmas Eve. What do you mean, in a way, she is? Well, Father, I hope you don't think I'm going to walk out of my whole family tonight. You don't have to worry about that. You mean you're not going, Henry? Mary, do you have to pin your own brother down like that? But I'm just going for a little while. Why, Henry, we always spend Christmas Eve together as a family. And then go to church together. Mother, I thought that after we got the tree trimmed, well, naturally, we'd want to sit around and rest for a second. And I thought that while we're resting, I'd just race over and say hello to the gang and then come around and meet you at the church. Oh, you had it all figured out, huh? Well, I didn't have it figured out exactly. I, I just thought I'd be prepared if the subject came up. Well, dear, I'm sorry to have to tell you, but you're not going to any party tonight. Not even for 12 minutes? Not even for two minutes. My goodness, Henry, don't you realize tonight is Christmas Eve? Alice, who are Ed and Bill? Ed and Bill? Ed and Bill who, dear? I don't know. His card's just signed Ed and Bill. Well, isn't that strange? Mother, is the subject of the party dropped for good? Yes, dear. Sam, look at this. At what? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards here from people we haven't sent cards to. And here it is the day before Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Here was Homer. Where'd you come from? Uh, Uncle Homer, Mrs. Aldridge. Good morning, Homer. Hello, Homer. Good morning, Homer. Henry, I'll get a very private piece of news for you. You have? Gee whiz, is that coffee cake? Yes, dear. Wouldn't you like to go out in the kitchen and get a plate and have a piece? Well, no, thank you. I've got my gloves on. I'll just take a piece right here. <laughs> oh, well, what's that in your coat, lapel? Mistletoe, Mary. Oh. Mr. Roll, are you expecting any telegrams today? Telegrams? Because if you are, I'll keep my eyes open for them for you. Why? Are you working down at the telegraph office? Well, not yet exactly, Mrs. Aldridge, but I've been talking to them about it. And things may open up at the last minute. Will you excuse me, please, everybody? Come on, Homer. Henry, you didn't fold your napkin. I didn't even unfold it. Alice, we didn't meet anybody by the name of Ed and Bill at Atlantic City that summer, did we? Homer, what do you got to tell me? Gee, I got wonderful news for you, I think. What about Eleanor's going to give you a Christmas present. Who, me? Well, sure. I just met her on the street, and she wanted me to ask you to meet her in front of the Centerville gift shop just as soon as you can get there. Well, gee, what makes you think she's going to give me something? That's why she wants you to meet her, so you can help her pick out a wallet. A wallet? I'm not kidding you, Henry. I swear, that's what she told me. Oh, Homer, did Eleanor come right out and say she was going to give it to me? Well, of course she didn't. I said to her, I said, you mean you're getting it for Henry? And she got all red and embarrassed and said, well, of course not. I'm getting it for my father. But I could tell she was covering up. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 
And I'm to meet her down at the gift shop, she said? Well, sure. Just as soon as you can get there. Hello, is this Toby Smith? Yes. Well, this is Eleanor Wentworth. Toby, could you meet me down at the gift shop in the next 15 minutes? At the Centerville gift shop? Yes, I'm there now. I want you to help me pick out a wallet. A wallet? You mean a man's wallet? Yes, of course, only I don't know anything about that sort of thing. You mean you're getting... You're getting... It's for my father. For your father. For your father. That's a hot one. Toby, really it is, and I'd love to see what kind you'd pick out. Well, sure, Eleanor. Oh, boy, I'll be down there in ten minutes. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Alice. This is Sam. Yes, dear. Where are you? Down at the office. Do you remember the Mulligans? The Mulligans? They live over in Abbott City. What's his first name? Well, I believe it's Joe. Joe? Yes, I'm sure it's Joe. And the Mulligans didn't send that card from Ed and Bill. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Father, will you please take a look at this Christmas card I just got? Well, let me see it. Isn't that embarrassing? I bet it cost 75 cents. Who's it from, dear? From Homer. Isn't that embarrassing? Oh, now, I think it was a very nice thing for him to do. But, Mother, do I have to send one back to him? Well, of course, Mary. Now, please don't bother me, dear. I've got to wrap up that fruitcake I've been meaning to send Mrs. Hawkins all week. To Mrs. Hawkins? Yes, dear. She has three boys in the service, and she's all alone this Christmas. Mother! Mother, where are you? I'm out here in the kitchen, Henry, and I'm very busy. Well, I'm very sorry to interrupt you like this, but could I have a talk with you confidentially about something important? Well, what's happened, dear? Well, nothing. Only could you please step into the dining room a second? Mary, I don't like to be rude, but this is about Christmas. Oh, that's all right, Henry. Only I hope you're not going to spend a whole lot on me. On who? Now, Mary, don't start getting any ideas. Henry, you'll have to hurry. I haven't more than a minute. Yes, Mother, here's what happened. Eleanor Wentworth has given me a $3.95 wallet, plus tax. What's that? A wallet. It's made of leather, and it even has a place for my student body. For your what? <laughs> my student body card. That's in case if I'm in an accident, people will know who I am. Well, now, just one minute, dear. Suppose you calm down and tell me very slowly what it is that happened. But, Mother, there's no time to lose. I've got to have four dollars. What for? Don't you understand? I've got to give Eleanor a present just as good as the one she's giving me, haven't I? Well, frankly, Henry, if Eleanor at her age wants to spend money on presents for boys, it's none of my business. But I don't believe I have four dollars to give you to buy her anything. But, Mother, what am I going to do about Toby Smith? What's that? Well, Toby Smith was down there, too, putting his in his two cents worth because he thinks the wall is for him. And Eleanor pointed out something that she's crazy about. And it costs $4. And if I don't beat him to it, he'll get it first. And then won't I look like a fool? Henry, if you have $4 of your own, that's something else. But I really don't think I should give it to you. Mother, will you please look at what I just discovered? I'm certainly not going to send a card to Homer. Why not, Mary? Look, Mother, I held the card he sent me under a very strong light. And look at what's been erased on it. I hope you like your gun, love, Aunt Beth. <laughs> well, dear, Homer was probably just cutting down expenses. Mary, Mary, could you step into the living room while I have a confidential talk with you for a second? What about? Christmas. Oh, you want some advice? Mary, do you remember what it was I was going to do just as Henry came in? No, Mother. Well, Henry? Do you know Toby Smith? Yes. Do you like him? Henry, I can't stand him. Mary, I'm sure glad to hear you say that. Could you lend me four dollars? Four dollars? Well, look, Mary, if I don't give Eleanor more than a 25-cent handkerchief, I'll never be able to walk on a public street again. And I know just exactly what she wants. What? Well, she pointed it out in the gift shop. She said it was about the nicest thing she'd ever seen. What was it? Mary, haven't you even been listening? A Christmas tree that lights up. A what? To wear on the lapel of your coat. It's a pin, see, and it has a little battery in it. Really? Sure, and it's only four dollars. And they've only got one left. But, Henry, you already owe me money. Hey, Henry. She was home. Where are you? Boy, I think I'm going to get that job delivering telegrams this afternoon. Oh, that's fine. Listen, Mary. Hello, Mary. Hello, Homer. Did you... Did you... Have the mails been coming through all right today? <coughs> yes. Well, how do you feel? I feel just fine. Oh. Homer, what is it you want? Listen, did you know Toby Smith is taking Eleanor to the party tonight? You're crazy. Who told you that? Toby did. I met him just a little while ago on his way home. He had to get some money to buy something. Mary, do you hear that? Haven't you got any family pride? <laughs> Which counter is it at, Henry? It's right over here, Homer. Oh, mister. 
there something I can do for you, young man? Yes, sir. I came back to get the tree. Uh, what's that? The Christmas tree that lights up. Oh, yes. We do have a nice one here in the store this year, haven't we? I guess he's hard of hearing, Henry. No, the little Christmas tree. The what? Don't you remember the little Christmas tree that surprises you when it lights up? Oh, you mean the pinch. Sure, I finally got the $4 for well, it. Well, I'm sorry, but that's just been sold. What's that? It's been sold? Less than ten minutes ago. Well, that's a fine thing. After I promised to make my sister's bed every morning for a month as compound interest. I'm sorry, sir. Hey, look, Henry, how about getting Eleanor just a straight flashlight? Boy, I saw one that's so powerful it'll blind her. <laughs> Homer, what would she do with a flashlight? Well, I know darn well I'd like it. Mr. Mister, are you positive that pin's been sold? Well, there's the clerk over there who made the sale. She might even be able to tell you who bought it. Oh, I know who bought it. I just don't see how he got down here so fast. And Eleanor said herself it's the only pin she's ever seen she really likes. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. She was Toby, what are you doing back here? Mister, how about that Christmas tree that lights up like a pin? I mean, well, you know what I mean. I beg your pardon? The pin. The pin. I'm sorry, young man, but that pin's been sold. It's been sold? Yeah. Oh, now listen, Henry. She whiz, Toby. You mean you didn't buy it? Now listen, Henry, I'm supposed to get that for Eleanor. Hand it over. Hand what over? I haven't got it. Toby, stop pushing, Henry. That's what I say. Listen, Homer Brown, did you buy it? Hey! Now listen, Toby. <laughs> now, wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. Be careful of that piece on earth thing. <laughs> Sam Morris speaking. Oh, hello, Sam. This is Alice. Yeah. Didn't you room with someone at Princeton by that name? By what name? Ed or Bill? He didn't have both names. And anyhow, we called him Murph. Oh. <laughs> well, the reason I called here is to ask what we ought to do about Homer. Homer? What's happened to him? Well, he was here just a little while ago, and after he left, I found a card on the living room table addressed to me. Yes? Well, he's apparently saving postage. Don't you think I ought to give him something rather nice? All right. How about one of your fruitcakes? Sam, that reminds me. Don't let me forget to send Mrs. Hawkins that fruitcake. That's a nice idea. No one in town I'd rather remember. She's got three sons in the service. That's the way I feel. And Alice, it's starting to snow pretty hard. Tell Henry he'd better start shoveling. Well, Henry isn't here right now. Well, when he comes in, tell him. All right, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mother! Yes, Henry? I've got to ask you something. Dear, your father wants you to keep the walks cleared of snow. Sure, Mother, but listen. Who could this be? She's a lady, see? She's a lady. What's that? Well, now wait, Mother. She's a lady about so high, see, and she wears a black coat with a black fur collar. Who is she? Henry, what are you talking about? Who is she, Mother? Who is she? I've got to know. Is this a game, Henry? A game? Mother, my whole Christmas is at stake. She's my only clue. Henry, I can't possibly know who you're talking about. Well, she was. You know all the ladies in town. Now listen very carefully. She comes up to here on me, see? She wears a black coat with fur cuffs. I thought you said a fur collar. I did? Sure. And she's not very heavy. She weighs maybe... Maybe... Well, you know, Mrs. Brown... Yes? Well, she isn't like that at all, but that'll give you an idea. <laughs> and, and she wears her eyeglasses on a chain. Oh, my goodness. Henry, why do you have to know the answer? She's got the tree. She's got the tree. Whose tree? My tree that I'm giving Eleanor. What tree? She got there ahead of Toby and me, don't you see? The clerk described her to me, and I gotta find her and make her an offer. She wears her glasses on a chain, and she's about so high. And fur on a coat. Well, the only person that reminds me of is Mrs. Kittinger. Mrs. Kittinger? Gee whiz, why didn't I think of her? I'll go right over. Now, wait a minute, Henry. It might just possibly be Mrs. Tarbell. Mrs. Tarbell? Sure, that sounds like Mrs. Tarbell. I'll go right over. No, wait, wait. I just thought of someone else who wears her glasses on a chain. A woman? Oh, yes, of course, Miss Perkins. Miss Perkins? All right, I'll find Miss Perkins, Mrs. Tarbell, and Mrs. Kittinger. And don't forget the front wall. No, I won't, Mother. Just as soon as I've taken care of this. Goodbye. Henry, I thought of someone else. Henry! Hello there, Henry Aldrich. Won't you step inside? No, thanks, Mrs. Kittinger. I only get snow all over your rug. Oh, my goodness, look at the snow. Well, what can I do for you, Henry? Well, first... Do you have a coat with fur on it? Why, uh, uh, not to give away, Henry. No, I was just wondering. I thought you wore glasses. Why, uh, I do sometimes. Did your mother send you over? Well, in a way, she did. Were you down at the gift shop this morning? Yes, I was. Well, did you make a purchase there? Yes, of course. As a matter of fact, it was very foolish of me to wait until the last minute. There was hardly anything left. I'll say. Um... Henry, just what was it you wanted? Nothing, nothing. Gee, your walk certainly needs shoveling, doesn't it? Yes, I'm afraid it does. 
Well, Mrs. Kittinger, if you have a shovel, I'd be very glad to clean it off for you. Well, now, that's very thoughtful of you, Henry. And I'd be glad to pay you. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't take any money from you. But when I get through, Mrs. Kittinger, you're going to be around, aren't you? Yes. Because I want to have a little talk with you. Why, Henry Aldrich. How do you do, Mrs. Tarbell? Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you. Well, I'm sure glad to see you're wearing your glasses on a chain. What's that? Boy, did I make a mistake over at Mrs. Kittinger's. She wears them, but they're not on a chain. And that's where I got off on the wrong foot. Henry, didn't I see you just as I was leaving the gift shop this morning? Did you? Yes, I'm sure I did. Mrs. Tarbell, how would you like to have your walk clean? We'll return to the Aldrich family in just a moment. Later this evening, NBC will deliver a Christmas package bursting with good cheer. A radio adaptation of Charles Dickens' classic, The Pickwick Papers. Our stars will be Alan Webb, Melville Cooper, and Cyril Richard. The Pickwick Papers over the years has become the favorite of young and old alike, and it's in keeping with the holiday season. Don't miss The Pickwick Papers, as brought to you by Theatre Guild on the Air later tonight. Now, tomorrow night, NBC will bring you more Yule Time Entertainment, when the Railroad Hour welcomes as guest soprano, Dorothy Kirsten. Miss Kirsten will join your singing host, Gordon McRae, in excerpts from the Nutcracker Suite and Christmas songs of many countries. Stay tuned to NBC tomorrow evening, the Monday night of music. You'll hear the Telephone Hour, the voice of Firestone, an old-fashioned band concert by Paul Laval and the Band of America, and NBC's newest show, which features the talents of Marguerite Piazza, Robert Merrill, and NBC's man about music, Meredith Wilson. Now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Well, so far this Christmas, Henry's one purpose is to catch up with the lady who bought the only pin of its kind in town, a pin that cost $4 and that looks like a small Christmas tree, which Eleanor said she'd just love to have if anyone wanted to give her anything. The scene opens in the Aldridge living room. Dad, are you home? I am. I thought I sent word for Henry to clean off our walk. Well, dear, I asked him to, but he went out and he hasn't come back since. Ah, and look at me. I had to wade through a drift up to my knees. Will you go right up and change your clothes? What's gotten into that boy? It can take time to shovel other people's walks, but not ours. Why do you say that? Miss Perkins stopped me on the street on the way home and told me how nice it was of Henry to come over and clean her walk. Well, my goodness. Oh, and here, see whether you can figure these Christmas cards out. One is signed Ida, and one is signed Van. Ida? I never heard of Ida. Well, who's Van? Well, that isn't the point, dear. But why would any Ida be sending you a card at the office? I'm going up and soak my feet. Hello? Uh, this is Western Union calling. Is Henry Aldridge there? No, he isn't. Do you have a telegram for him? No, I just wanted to say hello. Who is this? It's Homer. I got the job. Goodbye. What's that? Mother, I have that fruitcake ready for Mrs. Hawkins. You have, Mary? Sam? Yes, Alice? Have you started to soak yet? What? For well, my gracious, Christmas is always like this. Hello? Is this Miss Aldridge? Yes. This is Miss Kittinger. I just wanted to call and tell you how nice it was of you to send Henry over. What's that? I say it was so sweet of you to send Henry over to clean my walk. Oh. Oh, did he clean yours, too? Yes, he did a perfect job. And he wouldn't take a cent. All he wanted to do was come in and look at the presents I'm giving. What's that? All right, Alice. What is it you want? Merry Christmas, Mrs. Aldridge. Well, thank you very much. And Merry Christmas to you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Sam, what are you doing down here in your bare feet? You asked me to come down. What do you want? Oh. Oh, well, I was going to ask you to take that fruitcake over to Mrs. Hawkins, but I guess it will have to wait. But I'm down here now. No, dear, you go right back up and soak. Hey, say, Henry, isn't that you? Sure. 
Homer. What is it you want? Well, come on with me while I deliver a couple of telegrams. Gee whiz, I'm tired. I'm going home. It's only a few blocks out of your way. Homer, look at me. My feet are wet. I haven't had any lunch. Boy, what have you been doing? I've been shoveling every walk in town. Boy, did my mother double-cross me. Yeah, but look, Henry, my first stop is Mrs. Hawkins, just three doors down the street. I'll even let you borrow one of my gloves. Here, take the right one. I carry my telegrams in the left one. Thanks. And one of the telegrams I've got is a war message. A what? Sure, it's from John Hawkins to his mother. He's in an army camp down in Texas. I thought John Hawkins was in Korea. No, his two brothers are in Korea. Now, here's the house right here. And that's a war message you have for her? Well, sure. John says he's very sorry, but he wasn't able to get a furlough to come home. And he's also sorry he and his brothers can't all be here tonight to spend an old-fashioned Christmas with their mother. Yeah? And then he wishes her a Merry Christmas. Homer, I thought you weren't supposed to read confidential messages. Well, she was Ivan read you the message, Henry. Besides, everybody will know about it tomorrow. Oh, how do you do, boys? How do you do, Mrs. Hawkins? A telegram. For me? Won't you step in while I see whether it needs an answer? Well, okay. Honey, I don't think you'll find it does, Mrs. Hawkins. No? Now, let me see if I can get my glasses untangled. This chain is always catching on something. Can I help you untangle it? Uh, no, no, thank you. I have it. Mrs. Hawkins! I'll be there in just one minute. Gee whiz, Homer, that sounds like Toby Smith in the living room. Mrs. Hawkins, this is it, all right. I'll pay you $4 for it. Toby, what are you doing here? Hey, look, Homer, they're on a chain. What? The glasses. Now, listen, Toby, you can't have that pin. Get away, Henry. Now, listen, Toby. Henry, don't let him push you like that. Boys, boys, look out for that angel. Now, listen, Henry. There, darn you. Hey! Boys, boys, watch the door. <laughs> well, gee whiz. Would you mind putting another log on the fire, please? That's just what I'm going to do. My goodness, but it's an awful night out. You ought to look out the window, Mother. I've never seen so much snow on Christmas Eve. Mary, straighten that piece of holly that's hanging right over your father. All right. Hold still, Father. I can't lift the log and hold still, too. <coughs> and dear, look out for the sparks. They're all right. Mary, when Henry came a while ago, exactly what did he say? He just asked whether you and Father were in, and I said no. You'd gone out to do some shopping, and then he ran upstairs. And when he came down, he had his best suit on. And that's all he said? Well, he said to tell you he finally straightened out the whole problem of Eleanor's present, and that he was in an awful hurry to get down to the glass cutters and something about a party. Sam, what do you think we ought to do? Phone wherever the party is and tell him to come home. Now, dear... We aren't going to do anything like that. Didn't you explain to Henry that we always spend Christmas Eve together, as all families do? Dear, if Henry doesn't want to spend this evening with us, it's, it's something I'm not going to force him to do. Mother, don't you think he ought to be punished? Mary, dear, uh, will you go out to the kitchen and get that big bowl of fruit and nuts out there? Yes, Mother. Uh, cheer up, Alice. He'll be along shortly. Sam, I'm afraid Henry doesn't even begin to know what Christmas really means. The one thing he's thought about all day is himself and that present he wanted to get Eleanor. That's the only thing that's meant anything to him. He didn't shovel the walk. He didn't get the cellar window fixed. He... Oh, my goodness, Sam. That reminds me. You didn't get that fruitcake over to Mrs. Hawkins. Well, how could I, Alice? I had to go out and shovel the walk for Henry. Oh, I know, dear. But here it is Christmas Eve and Mrs. Hawkins... Well, of all the people in this town, we should have sent all one All right, to... Alice, all right. I'll take it over first thing tomorrow. Well, can't we take it over now? Tonight, in this storm? Well, we could certainly drop it off on the way to church, can't we? Alice, I realize Mrs. Hawkins misses her boys like everything, but the church is in one direction and the Hawkins house is in the other. It's snowing to beat the band. I... I'll take it over first thing tomorrow. Very well. Uh, incidentally, I, um, I wonder how the Hawkins boys are getting along. Well, I understand she hears from them quite often. Yes, there was always one thing about them. They were devoted to their mother. Yes. Uh, Alice, don't cry. I, I didn't mean it that way. I'm not crying. Here's a bowl of fruit and nuts, Mother. Will you have some? No, dear. What would I want with any fruit and nuts? Why, it's Christmas Eve. Father? I'm not hungry, Mary. What's the matter? I thought you wanted me to bring them in. We did, dear. Just put them down there on the table where they'll look Christmassy. Oh, and light the candles on the piano just as though 
Dear, where are you going? I'm going to phone Henry and tell him to leave that party and come home. Sam Aldridge, I don't want you to. But, Mother, if Father doesn't, Henry won't even be here to go to church with us. Now, Henry knows we're going. If he isn't here by then, we'll go alone. <laughs> When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Let us all rise while we sing, We Three Kings of Orient Are. Sam. Yes, Alice. Sam, look. Where? Just three rows ahead. It's Mrs. Hawkins. Yeah? You mean we should have brought the fruitcake with us? No, dear. Look who's with her. My goodness, Mother, look. Have the three Hawkins boys come home? No, Mary. Can't you see who that is with her? It's Henry and Homer and Toby. <laughs> Henry. I've never seen him look so nice. Alice, I've just remembered who Ed and Bill are. They're Mrs. Hawkins' two sons in Korea. One of the brightest futures open today is ready for the girl who chooses nursing as her profession. You'll receive a professional education. You'll work with doctors and professional people. You'll associate with the finest citizens in the community. What's especially important, you'll be serving humanity and be ready to serve your country in time of emergency. You can join this hand-picked group of young women if you're a high school graduate or a college student of good health and character. Talk it over with your school advisor... Or go to your nearest hospital today and ask how you can become a nurse. The Aldrich Family is transcribed as written by Clifford Goldsmith. Henry is played by Bobby Ellis and Homer by Jack Grimes. Mr. and Mrs. Aldrich are House Jameson and Barbara Robbins. Your announcer is Dick Dudley. Listen again next week, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with the Aldridge family. Merry Christmas, everybody. (laughs) 